Welcome to our video on the production of a monumental mold and fiberglass casting. In this video you will learn the techniques required to make a mold on a monumental statue using urethane rubber with a plaster shell. In addition, in this video you will learn the techniques to produce a polyester fiberglass casting. So sit back and enjoy. In producing a mold and casting of a statue of this size, there are many safety precautions required. Be aware of the tools that you are using, the chemicals that you are using, and of course, be aware of the fact that you're dealing with a very large statue. When you need help, have help with you. If you need auxiliary equipment, make sure you have everything that you need so that you are safe. Applying your mold release to the statue prior to molding is the first and most important step. It will be repeated often during the setup process, but at the very beginning you make sure that you get it everywhere. A thorough coverage of every square inch of the model is critical as any places that are missed will bond to the rubber. Take your time, apply three full coats and after application, buff each coat. The process of rough framing in the model with lumber provides you a basis for which your clay will be attached to for finding the contours of the model for the mold making process. Take your time to set up a basic framing. This will make it easier for you when you're applying your clay. A plastic sheet is wrapped around the model prior to the attachment of the framing and will be cut away after the clay is applied. Building the parting line in the mold making process is the most critical step. If you do this right, you'll end up with a mold with clean, sharp surfaces that mate perfectly with each other. Take your time in preparing your clay for the parting line fabrication. Make sure you make enough clay up so that you can go all the way around the section that you are working on. Keep everything clean Take your time, trim the clay out, make sure everything fits together nice and smoothly. Initially get your clay going around the statue, butted up to the edge of the statue over the plastic. Get all the pieces to fit nice and neatly together. When you're making your keys in the clay, take your time, make sure everything has a draft on them so that they will be able to demold easily. After you've roughed out your clay, it's time to trim the plastic back. 
work the plastic down underneath the edge of the clay so it is no longer visible. This makes cleanup of your statue easier afterwards. Using sculpting tools, take your time and make a perfect mating surface. You need to go through numerous steps of cleaning the surface and working the clay into place to make sure that it butts up nice and evenly. Because we are using a water-based clay here, after you've built up one section, you should cover it up with plastic so that it retains its moisture. Make sure that your surfaces butt up square to the edge of the model. This is one of the most critical parts of the mold making process. A good parting line is a key to a good mold. After you have completed building your parting line around your model, it is time to release it for the molding process. Again, using a mold paste wax, you take your time and you go around coating the entire surface. It is critical here to have complete coverage. After applying a mold paste wax, we use a spray-on release. This helps us out in getting any areas that may have been missed. Take your time, coat the parting line, coat the entire model, and then again use a brush to spread the mold release around. The first step in preparing your rubber for application is mixing the two components. Most urethane mold making rubbers are an equal part by volume mixing material. A complete and thorough mixing is very important here to ensure a homogeneous mix and proper curing of the mold making rubber. Take your time and scrape out the mixing buckets. As an extra precaution, you can pour the rubber back into a second bucket, scrape it out, and make sure you have a complete mix. You'll notice that the rubber is quite low in viscosity and therefore can be brushed on very thinly. It's very important to apply a thin, full coat. This is referred to as the print coat and will capture all the detail of the model. You must make sure to get the rubber onto every single detail of the model during your application. Take your time and mix up batches that you can handle in one application. 
as the rubber starts to cure, it will thicken. Applying a second coat of rubber, we add pigment into the rubber mix so that we can differentiate between the first coat and the second coat. This allows us to see where the rubber is and where it is not. Again, full coverage is important. After we have applied three coats of rubber with pigment so that we can see the difference between the coats, we are now ready to add a thickened coat of rubber. We again mix our rubber as we have in the previous steps. After we have mixed our rubber together, we make sure that it is thoroughly blended. The next step is to add a thickening agent to the rubber so that it will take on a thick consistency and apply like cake batter. The idea here is to add enough thickener so that the rubber will be nice and thick and easy to move in a thixotropic state. The rubber can now be applied with a trowel, working into different areas, filling in detail so that you have no thin sections in the mold rubber. Again, mix up small batches. After we've applied a batch of rubber, we then need to smooth it out. This is done using soapy water, which actually does not affect the rubber bonding to itself. As you can see in our next batch, we are working it into all the tight little crevices of the mold. An additional step to be taken after you have thickened the rubber is to build rubber keys all over the model for locking it into its shell. Because the rubber is so thick, it can be worked and shaped into different locations that would not normally be possible with an unthickened rubber. Take your time to define the shape before you smooth it out using the soapy water mix. Again, you can build a very defined shape using the soapy water so that everything will key together nicely. Again, a very important step in the mold making process is building rubber keys. Take your time to build a nice rubber surface that is square and will lock into your shell nicely. Because it is made out of rubber, it will pop in and out of your shell with very little difficulty. Putting keys all over the mold will ensure a tight seal to the shell and perfect alignment in your final casting. Again, using soapy water, we smooth out the rubber to make our keys. Take your time and do a good job.
After your first section of your rubber mold has been completed and the keys have been attached and the rubber has cured completely, it is now time to prep the model for the next section of rubber mold. You must remove all clay and do so carefully to make sure not to separate the rubber from the model. Cleanup here is very important. Whatever is necessary to clean up the model so that when the next rubber mold section is created, there will be no problems. Again, it is important to pay attention to detail here in model preparation. Filling in any little gaps with some soft clay and smoothing it out will ensure that you have a tight model sitting perfectly within its shell. After you've cleaned the model completely, it is time to apply more wax to make sure that everything will separate carefully. It never hurts to apply a little bit extra wax.